Recording.
Recording in progress. Over there. Well, you, when you have a breakaway minion from the breakaway minion, then you know you have. Oh, they have enough guys that they could have sent some over there. Is there any chance of any of them ever They are. They are. Some of them are involved in this. But not coming. Yeah, but maybe, maybe when we change regimes. That could be. Good morning, Rabbi Green. Good morning, Jeff. You okay? A little, I may have a cold. I don't know. All right. So messed up. Good to see you going on by Zoom. Okay. Uh, okay. In February. Now it's being contested. National politics in no, no, no. the There will be and there are people who are trying to persuade a certain individual to be run for president. Okay. So if that comes to fruition, because Rubain is running against Shimon. That's what <laughs> Not challenged. If somebody runs unopposed, right. it's uncontested. 
if somebody runs against somebody else. That's a contest. So it's competitive. All right, so, chairman, I'm going to start with the learning spots. I said, he wants to become the guy because <coughs> he's Jewish. Yeah, yeah. And on Sunday, he'll Somebody will take him into the bathroom and check him out. He'll be the guy by Sunday in church. Ah, okay, right. a year of learning sponsors, a year of learning friends of Marcy Kurtz, the memory of her great niece, Leah Bracha, Isaac and Evelyn Blachor, in memory of his sister, Chaya Rachel Bas Isser, friends of Leonie Meisman, Leah Sabra Bas Chanuk Zundel, uh, two months of learning by friends of Milton Meller in honor of his second bar mitzvah, a month of learning by Ron and Susan Podolsky in memory of his mother, Freyla Bas Shraga Feivel, Fairless and Chaim Reese in memory of her father, Pinchas Ben Abraham, Rabbi Dr. Yankee and Malki Honig in memory of his sister, Chava Bas Harav Simcha Ben Yaman, his brother Tzvi Aaron Zeb Ben Harav Simcha Ben Yaman, and his father, Harav Simcha Ben Yaman Ben Harav Yosef Yitzchak, and her mother, Sosia Bat Choyner. Be Pizer in memory of her sister, Rivka Bas Avram Michal Halevi. A week of learning by the family of Danny Shepotovsky in memory of their father and grandfather, Daniel ben Aaron David, uh, Marsha Fried and family, in memory of Milton, Yitzchak Mordechai ben Abraham, Michael and Judith Poretsky, in memory of a brother, Avram ben Gershon. Today being the 29th, right? we have a day of learning by Lala and Siggy Bessler, in memory of their granddaughter, Panina Margalit Badov, by Milton and Pearl Frank, in memory of his father, Yaakov ben Moshe. And that is it. May Shamas have an aliyah, crank where a field of the Yeshua Shamat Aliyah, Macho ben Israel, a good Amen. Okay. Okay. Zev and Harvey are online this morning. Okay. Is that here this morning? No, he's not here. He's online. I just told you. Okay. Okay. We are going to start some of hey, the moment Aleph. Okay. Okay. Remember now that we saw in the Gemara that as a way of trying to produce no lad, the citation of a pasuk ki metu kol haanashim was presented but that was where Hashem was able to be Mayfair Moshe's neder in regards to not going back to Egypt. Okay, right? So we pick up on that topic as we continue on the top of Samach Hay. Where was that neder? The Yisro, I'll marry okay. The I'll Gemara is that. going to come back to it, okay? And mention that it was before Yitro right. and written question, okay, which we're going to get into as to whether or not when you make a neder regarding a person, you make it in front of the person, does it also have to be nullified in front of that person or not? All right, Marty, okay? All right. Ron, you're here, all right? You got us placed, right? Okay. All right. Tanya, Tanya, we have a blight. It's now going to uh, deal with the example of that pasuk and the annulment of Moshe Rabbeinu's oath. One who makes a vow, a refraining from benefit from his uh, friend or neighbor. Ein matirin lo, according to this brayta, we do not annul <coughs> that vow, assuming that we have a valid petach, which we saw a lot of discussion about previously. Ela bifanav, except in front of him. Menahani mili, what's the reasoning? Amar Rav Nachman, he says as follows, dechtiv. Why? And now we cite the entire pasuk. Okay, second line on Samachay uh, Amud Aleph. Vayomer Hashem el Moshe b'Midyan. Okay, Leich Shuv Mitzrayma ki Metu Kol Haanashim. 
go back to Egypt. Hashem tells him while Moshe is in Midian, because all of those individuals who sought your life have are not alone, no longer around. Okay, Amarlo. Hey, what? The Midian Nadartala. That in Midian you made the bow and the endowment. Annulment must take place in Midian as well. In other words, it's just since you made the vow before Yitro, the implication is that before Yitro, that is how the vow must be annulled. It's going to tell you in two seconds. Let's see what the Gemara says. Good question. Okay, Heshi, I didn't catch your question. I'm sorry. No, he said we're going to say it in a couple of words. Right, that's what I'm saying, right? Dichtiv. Why? Because it's written V'yoel Moshe. Okay? Right? So in other words, Moshe made a I'm going to use the word in quotes. A commitment, a, commitment, a, a promise. Okay? Right? And this was made before Yitro. Okay? Ein Ella Ella Shvua. And when we oh, use God. the word Allah Oh, your ale, right? The word comes Allah. From the word oath. Right, was, which is similar to the word oath. Shavua. Dichtiv, why? Because we darshan again. Vayave Allah. Okay, that when it was Nebuchadnezzar and Sidkiyahu, okay, that Sidkiyahu. Uh, had made a vow to Nebuchadnezzar in regarding a certain situation, which we're going to, Gemara is going to spell out to us shortly. And we're going to see what happens. Okay. V'gam b'melech nebuchad netzara marad asher hishbiu belohim chayim. Okay. Because the Pasuk tells us that even regards to King Nebuchadnezzar, a vow was made to him, to Nebuchadnezzar, based on the living God. Okay? In other words, Sidkiyahu took a vow, okay, not to, in this case, I'm going to just say a little bit, reveal a situation regarding Nebuchadnezzar in that case. And he rebelled. What does it mean, rebelled? Mai Mardute, what was his rebellion? And now the Gemara is going to tell us that scenario, and eventually we'll try to see how that applies to the earlier example of, of uh, Moshe and Yitro. And this may answer Sid's question about how could it be that he was a non-Jew, Yitro, right? Okay, I said it may, doesn't, be, doesn't mean for sure. Okay, so what's the situation, says the Gemara? Ish kechei tzidkiya levuchad netzah, dahave ka'achil arnavachai. That it happened that Sidkiyahu found Nebuchad Netzer eating a live rabbit. Okay? Okay, all right. Amarle, Nebuchad Netzer says, says to Sidkiyahu, Ishtabayali, the low miglet eluve. May I want you to make a vow that you will not reveal this situation that, that, I, I, that. that I was doing that. Velo tepuk milta, and the thing will not become known publicly. Ishtabaya. Uh, Sidkiyahu took such a, a uh, vow or an oath. The sof. The havakam it's tied, said Kiyahu, but goofy. It bothered him so much that it uh, made him sick physically, made him ill physically. Okay? What did he do? Said Kiyahu, eat shield. He asked Ash Shavuate. He went to the Sanhedrin and he requested that the, he be exempted from the vow. Which is interesting. 
right? Because you have to tell at least one member of the Sanhedrin what the oath was. And in so doing, he's already he revealing it. The oath. Oh. So the answer is that when a Sanhedrin or an Adam Kusher cancels a vow, it's retroactive. <laughs> it's as if in the vow. So if they cancel as a then it's as if it never happened. But if they do not accept the Passover, then he is gets Malchus for the real. Okay, that's interesting. Particularly the part that it's it's as if never having been done because yeah, the Gemara is going to come back. Right. Which is a different situation. From now on. So what happens for going on further on this story? Shema Nebuchadnezzar, the Kamevazim way. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar understood that people were then, it became uh, known, okay, and that he was being ridiculed. Shalach va'ayte Sanhedrin v'tzidkiyahu. He sent and gathered, had the Sanhedrin and Sidkiyahu before him. Amar lahum. And he said to them, Chazitun ma'i ka'avid Sidkiyahu. Have you seen the result of what Yahu did by saying what the situation was? Okay. Lav hachi ishtabeya b'shema d'shemaya. Deloma gilma. Did I not ask him to make a vow by, I'm going to use the word divine name, so to speak, that he would not reveal the situation? Amarle, so Tzidkiyahu defending himself. Each shale. I requested and asked them to nullify the vow. Okay, so now the Gemara says, Amarle mit shalim So he says to them, now theoretically to the Sanhedrin, okay, do you normally go about uh, the practice of, uh, of, uh, of abrogating oaths, things like that, nullifying oaths? Amarle said to him, and yes, Amrele, they said to him, yes, we do. Amarlaho, Bifanav, oh, Afilu Shalom Bifanav. Okay, must you do it before the person against, against whom the vow was made or not in his presence? Okay, Amrele, they said to him, Bifanav, normally we do it, okay, with the person against whom the vow was made in person. Amar lahon, so he said to them, va'atun, maya vidatun. Okay, and so therefore, what did you do? Okay, how, how did you, were you able to carry out? You didn't do it in my presence, Nebuchadnezzar says. Okay, my tama lo amritun So what was the reason that you didn't say <coughs> that case that it has to be in front of the presence of the person? Why didn't you say that? directly to Tzidkiyahu. Miyad immediately that tells us Yeshvu la'aretz yidmu ziknei batzion. Okay, a pasuk from Echa that they sat on the ground and they, they be quiet. Okay, you can't right? Anymore. Okay, in other words, it's as if they remove the cushions under which they <laughs> normally so would sit. But Yidmu, they weren't allowed to discuss okay. cases anymore. Right. So what happens? Okay. I don't know about that. I didn't see that shot. Okay. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak says, Rabbi Yitzchak, what did he do? Shasham tu karim mitachtehem. That they basically removed their pillows from underneath them. In other words, that they weren't able at that moment to continue to paskin. Answers. That doesn't mean, I don't know if it means ongoing. Okay. A new Mishnah. The Shulchan Aruch says he doesn't have to be there. Okay. So they actually made a mistake. No, Shulchan Aruch, there's a whole huge discussion. Mish Rishonim and Achronim <laughs> disagree. It, mistake, right? it would appear, okay, but Rishonim and Achronim okay, discuss this in much detail, okay, and 
to determine whether this is the halacha or not. He has to be made aware of it according to the Shulchan Aruch. He doesn't have to physically. Okay. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. We're now coming back. I'm going to suggest as we start with this new Mishnah, we're coming back again to our uh, scene of Nola as to whether that is a valid use of a petach to annul the vow. Okay. And we're going to see here a interesting um, situation. Okay. Rabbi Meir, according to Rabbi Meir, Yesh Tvarim Shehen Kenolad, Ve'enan Kenolad. There are situations, Rabbi Meir is saying, where it would might appear as an example of Nolad, but indeed it's really not a Nolad scenario. Therefore and therefore the Chachamim are going to say, in essence, this was not a valid neder when it was made. Okay, so therefore there's no need for a petach to a But they say no. Okay, but what happens? Ve'en chachamim modim lo. But the sages do not acknowledge and agree <laughs> on this situation. Okay? They, no, they don't agree that the vow is void without <laughs> any further action. They are made to him that there is a person. That's a different issue. Okay? But the question is, do they say initially no, it's as if the vow was never made. They don't agree with him in that case. Okay? That was his point. Okay? <clears throat> that it would have, okay? So naturally, we're going to ask what kind of situations might there be that it would appear as if it's no lad, and there, but not really. Okay? And <clears throat> therefore, how do we say then that Rabbi Meir can argue? that it's as if the vow is not valid initially, but why is it then that the Chachamim disagree and say, no, it may be a valid vow, but therefore we need a petah to Okay? All right, Kate said, what did it say? Amar says, the uh, person making the vow, konem she'ani no se'et poni she'avi hara. A person makes a vow that I will not marry Plonita, a certain young woman, because her father is with right? Amrulo. But then they tell him, the man who made the vow, mate, Osha Satchuva. Okay, that either he died or he did shuva. Okay. Or let's take another example. Okay. Konem Labayadze, Shahiniknas, Shahakelev Rabitoko. I make a vow that I will not enter this house because there's a terrible dog, a wild dog there, or there's a snake in the house. Amrulo Okay, but they tell him, no, the dog has died and the snake was killed. Okay? Now, Harain he these would appear to be in a no lad situation because they almost appear like a new situation. But a no no lad, but they are actually not examples of no lad, right? The ain chachamim modim, and the sages do not acknowledge this situation. They do not acknowledge Rabbi Meir's explanation of that situation. Okay, in that case. Gemara, let's go on. Konem sha'ani nichnas labayat zeh sha'kelev etc. That particular example. He was told, mate, right? No lad who? But if the dog died, questions the Gemara, isn't that an example of no lad, of a new situation? Okay. Because normally we would say death changes the situation, right? Amar Rabbi Huna says Rabbi Huna, ne'ese kotole nidro bedavar. No, 
The reason this is not, Rav Huna is saying, the reason that the rabbis don't consider it a nolad, a brand new situation, was because he explicit, explicitly made his vow on a particular condition. Okay? It was dependent upon that condition. Okay? This, that's the scenario. Okay? The Rabbi Yochanan. Oh, somebody is sitting. So move over one. Thank you. Okay? So what happens? The Rabbi Yochanan explains as follows. Amar kvar meit kvar asat tshuva ka'amrele. No, in other words, they're saying Rabbi Yochanan's explanation is, no, before the person made the vow, that's when the, the change occurred. The father had died or the, the dog died or the, the father made tshuva, etc. Snake slithered. So it has to be something after the... Uh, right? So in other words, they're arguing. So Rabbi Yochanan's answer is no. The vow was made on a mistaken premise, okay? And therefore, the vow never took effect, the chathila. Okay, that's the point. Not, not based upon a that, no that's Rabbi Yochanan's explanation, not a no. Not no lot, it's right. okay. false news. All right, okay. Metiv Rabbi Abba. Rabbi Abba, however, is challenging. Okay. okay. All right. So what happens? There's another situation. This, this comes from a different Mishnah that we're going to get to eventually. Koneim she'ani no say leponita ke'ora varehi na'e. A person makes a vow. I will not marry this woman because she appears to me as ugly. He hadn't seen her. I know that. I know that. She appears to me as ugly. We don't know that. We don't know that. Mara doesn't tell me that. Okay? Vahare hi But she's pleasant. So therefore, he, she didn't see her. No, it doesn't he tell me. She was ugly. It turned out she's gorgeous. We don't know. That's what it says. That's the word. Okay. He takes the vow that so-and-so is ugly. Maybe he didn't see her. Maybe somebody else gave him a report. We don't know. Okay? But she is a, a pleasant. Shechora, that she's dark complexion. Varehi levana, but she's of light complexion. Kitsara, that she's short. Varehi arucha, but instead she's relatively tall. Mutar ba. And he is permitted to marry her. In other words, we annul the vow. It's not a valid vow. Lo mipnei sheshchora v'neeset na'a. Not because she was actually ugly and became attractive. Shechora v'neeset levana. Not because she was dark complexion and became light complexion. Ktsara v'neeset aruka. Short and then became tall. Okay. Ela shehanada. Haneder ta'ut, not because the, it was a mistaken vow. It was made on the wrong premise. So that is how he's challenging and explains. So the answer the Gemara gives is to the challenge. Bish Rav Huna. We understand Rav Huna's explanation. Damar ne'eseb ketola nidro Why? Because his explanation was since there was an explicit condition when the vow was made, and that condition is no, was not appropriate, therefore the vow is not, l'chat chila initially is not a valid vow, okay? So Rav Huna's explanation works out, okay? Tana he taught, that the vow was made on a particular condition, and it was taught, therefore, that it was a mistaken vow. Ela, the Rabbi Yochanan, but according to the explanation that Rabbi Yochanan tries to give, right? The Amar, Kfar Meitu, Kfar Asat Shuvah, 
where he said that the vow, that the facts, okay, that when the vow was made, the circumstances had changed prior to the making of the vow. Lama le lemitne, tre zimne, neder taut. Why is it necessary then to say twice that this was a mistaken vow? Why did we have to teach a mistaken vow? Indeed, Kasha. And in, in, in fact, says the Gemara finishing, this is problematic for Rabbi Yochanan's reasoning. Okay. You don't need two cases. You don't need two examples in that situation. <clears throat> okay. In our new Mishnah, okay, we're going to see as follows. Furthermore, Va'od, Amar Rabbi Meir, Hodchim lo min hakatu, Torah. Okay, that one can use an example of a pasuk from the Torah to, to find a petach, to find an opening for the anom. Okay, and now we're going to have some examples. Va'omrimlo, and use the base din, that's why it's plural, I'm suggesting, says to the person who made the vow, okay, ilu hayita hitita yodea. Shata over al lotikon. Had you known that when you made this vow, you would be transgressing the Torah commandment of don't take revenge. Al lotitor. Had you known, etc., that you would be transgressing the Torah commandment of don't not bear a grudge. Al lotisne et vavecha. Or had you known when you made the vow? Okay, that, okay, that you would be uh, transgressing the law the Torah of, of don't hate your brother in your heart. That you should love your brother. That you should live with your brother. Okay? And furthermore, Shehu Ani, and were he to become impoverished, <clears throat> that you're not able to help him out and support him. Amar. Okay, all those suking, by the way, are grouped together. Okay. In uh, Vayikra chapter 19. Okay. All right. It says we see here all the sources, right? Amar. The person might have then said who made the vow, Ilu Hayiti Yodea. So who came, had I known that that would be the case, lo hayiti no dare, hare ze mutar. I wouldn't have made the vow, and therefore then that person is enough of a Pesach to annul his vow. So that would be the example that Rabbi Meir would be using to say, you could use Sukim from the Torah as a viable Pesach to annul the vow. Yes. Can a blind person make a vow? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. How could he say, I don't want to marry this girl before she speaks to the Lord? We don't want to. No. <laughs> Isn't a blind person like a dead person? That was what we so saw that's earlier. Metaphoric. I mean, that's not true, it's but it's, 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 it's an example. Okay. But the point, the point is they could still make a vow. Maybe not that kind of a vow. They could make a vow that they didn't want to benefit from well, someone. He doesn't want an ugly wife. No, but I'm saying besides he that. Have to <laughs> but I think the better example is not the benefit. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. All right, Joan. Amarle, now back to our Gemara. Amarle Rav Huna Bar Rav Katina, the Rabbanan. And so Rav Huna, the son of Rav Katina, mm -hmm. says to the rabbis, Neymar called the Ma'ane, love al nafil. Okay. Maybe what he's saying here is that, uh, okay, that uh, here instead of Rabbanan, by the way, there's a question of Girsa. 
and it's Rava. Okay, maybe what he's saying is Nami called the Ma'ani, love alai nafiu. Uh, place it on me. Okay, my demate, if you place it on me, me lefarsamo bahade kuli oma mefarsanale. Okay, that in this case, uh, we're going to say that uh, everyone is going to blame it on me. Okay, sustain me. In other words, he, the person who made the vow can say, how can you say that uh, if the person becomes poor, I'm not going to help him? I can give to the community. I can give to the yeah. Okay, I can, I can give to the that. local f federation. I can give to the Parnas of the community, the Gabai. The Gabai, remember, was the one in charge of the Tamhui. Mm -hmm. So I could give money to the Gabai. And by participating in the community, I, it's not, I can still see, feel that I'm not over on that Torah mitzvah. Okay, and therefore, what, why are you bringing this, challenging me with this situation? Okay, right? So therefore, because in that way, everybody is able to support him, right? Amarle, ani omer kol hanot fail. Eno no fail gabay tchila. Okay? And therefore, I might argue that that doesn't re uh, permit or they allow that person to uh, suffer, okay? But what the Gemara is telling us is a no, no fairly day goodbye tchila. That if you have the opportunity as an individual to help somebody, that precedes your obligation to giving to the communal uh, pushka, so There's to speak. There's a waiting list. Okay. In the meantime, the guy's hungry. Okay. That's the point. Okay, Mat Nitin. Our new Mishnah teaches as follows. Potchin la Adam b'ktubat ishto. We now can say that maybe we can find a petach to exempt the husband when he makes a vow. Okay, all right. Even if the requirement to fulfill that obligation is it written in the ksu. Okay, and what do we have? Okay, in other words, we're going to see a situation the, as follows. A situation occurred where a man made a vow that he would not have uh, physical benefits, provide his wife with physical benefits. Okay. May Ishto, you want to say it from her? Right. Yeah, from her. Yeah. From her, any benefit. Okay? Yeah. Right. What happens? Vaitak to Bata. And it was written in her ketubah. Okay? Tough dinari. 400 dinari. In other words, remember normally for a Batula, it's 200. For a non Batula, it's 100. And he must have added. Okay? He must have added to it, or it could be a coherence, right? Shot I saw was that he added, okay? Ubalifne Rabbi Akiva, and he came before Rabbi Akiva, and remember we mentioned that story yesterday with Rabbi Akiva and Kalba Savua. So it's interesting that the Gemara brings it up here again, Rabbi Akiva as the person, okay? V'chaivoli tenlak tubata. And Rabbi Akiva required that he pay the entire 400 denarii. Okay, pay the full ketubah. But what is he saying? Amar le Rebbe. But he explains to Rabbi Akiva, Shmona me od dinarim hiniach abba. My inheritance from my father was a total of 800 denarii. Okay, my not the left. Eight, right, eight, that's eight, what eight, the inheritance eight, was. Eight, eight. Okay. Natal achi arba meot, my brother took 400, va'ani arba meot, and I took 400. So what happens if I pay her the 400? Exactly, I'm going to be broke. Lo daya isn't enough for her. Shatitol he matayim va'ani matayim. Wouldn't it be enough that we did the 200 for her? which is the least basic minimum that's supposed to be given, okay? Right, 
and I keep 200. In other words, we split the 400. I lay Rabbi Akiva, he says as follows. Afilu atam ocher se'ar roshcha. Even if you have to sell the hairs on your head. Atana shimna tubata. You must give her the, pay the full amount of what you were committed as written by the Ketu. Amarlo. And so then the fellow says to back to Rabbi Akiva, Ilu hayiti odea shehu came. Had I known this initially, lo hayiti no dea vehitira Rabbi Akiva. Then I would not have made the vow initially not to benefit from her. Okay, and as a result, Rabbi Akiva then found this as a petach and used this to <coughs> annul his vow. I don't think that's the case. No, he didn't realize the implications. Of <laughs> In other words, if I realize that I lose every penny I have, I never would have put that number in the casino. It's not that it's Rebbe Akiva. He, he made a commitment not realizing it's in the casino. That's I a, thought I was right. rich. That's I'm why... Rich. That's why I wasn't going to jump with Kohenet. That's why I was I was going to, all right? Because in other because words- She would, be, might be entitled. Exactly. Because then she would have been entitled. But if I say, oh, it was a 200, normally 200, but I added it, that's why he may, have, I was rich. He, may, he may have thought, oh, well, you know, at the time, if I'm getting this, uh, this yeah, inheritance, but, it's but I didn't know that my brother, I didn't know that that only would have been that my brother was going to take 200. Okay. And that could have been before another, right? And others, I married her before the, my father died. And therefore, that's why I felt I was going to increase the Ksuba. But now when he died, this was all the money that was bequeathed. And my brother took half of it. And this is all I got. And if I give her the whole amount, I'll be poor. Right, so that would not be a no-lad situation. Why? Because it's based on what he had committed, committed at the time. Okay, so it was the wrong circumstance. So he has to the money only when he divorces. So what does he? So now that he, now that the vow, he would have had to divorce her because he vowed not to benefit from her. Which was against her the ketubah, but now that he's in the the vow is annulled, he does not have to. Do it. Okay, that's the point. No, no, he doesn't have to pay the no, he doesn't have to divorce. The case is they're now divorced. She wants her four hundred. He says, "Had I been aware." that I would be broke, I never would have written 400. And Rebbe Akiva says, pay her two, and you'll both have money. Does the amount of super have to be put into an No, that's not the shot that I saw. Well, no. Okay? That's so simple shot. He doesn't have it when he, when he that's it. Look at Art Scroll. I mean, Art Scroll says did. he doesn't have to pay the Ksuba. I'll go back and look. No, it, it, the case is that it's a debate over the Ksuba, not right. a debate. Before. The interesting question is why wasn't he just uh, Matir, the original letter? Well, that's a separate issue. But right. that's not the case. Okay, let's go on to the Gemara. Okay. Let's go on and we'll finish the Gemara. Okay, we're back to ra a question regarding Rabbi Akiva here. Okay. Now, normally, how do we pay off items of the Ksuba? Normally, with karka, with land. And we don't normally use metaltalin, okay, movable property, including money. Okay, now money would be included in the and under the consideration of movable property. This happens to be a machloket between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbanan. 
Okay? And we're going to see that now. Okay? So what happens? The Gemara asks the question regarding Rabbi Akiva. Okay? If he's, if given what he said, does this seem to imply that Rabbi Akiva accepts both Karka and Metaltalin as a way of paying off the Ksuba? Usually for other debts, that's yes for everybody. But for Ksuba, that's where the Machloket is. Rabbanan say it's got to be Karka. It would appear asks the Gemara that Rabbi Akiva holds either Karka or Metalta. Whenever there's whenever, a, both? whenever there's a lien. Yeah. Either. Whenever it's a secured it's loan, it's on Karka. But, but, but Karka doesn't really give her any money. Uh, uh, we'll see. We'll she see. She grows wheat, needs the wheat. Yeah, we'll see. Not a farmer. Come on she in. hires a farmer. <laughs> any secured <laughs> loan. That's is on the, land. The, she could, so the, the, is the land could be sold. Easiest thing is she land. could sell the land too. Okay, so what happens? Metaltale, me. Okay, so let's go on. Metaltale, regarding movable property, which we include in this, we save money. Me, Mishtabde Liktuba, is that able to be? Uh, attached, I'm going to use the word for the moment there, to the Ksuba, Amar Abaye, Karka, Shava Shmona Me Odina. No, what they, according to Abaye, what they were talking about was land that was worth 800 dina. Vaktani, say our Rosho. But our Mishnah said it talked about even if he had the hairs of his head. In other words, if he had to sell his hair, okay, and that would produce money, and that's metalculin. Okay, he would have to pay. <laughs> okay, but say our Rosho metalculin who, and the hair on his head is movable property. Okay, hachi kama. This is what he says to him. Afilu atamocher say our Rosho. Even were you to sell the, all the hairs on your head, okay, ve'ochel, okay, all right? What happened? Shamat mina, shamat mine, okay. So that's the point. And you would, uh, okay, then you would have to still pay up, okay. Even if you had to sell your hair in order to buy food, all right? He doesn't want to sell his. Sells Even if you had to sell money. some everything else in order to have order enough to, to live on, okay, you you would still have to. And, and we, nonetheless, right? his wife gets still. <laughs> okay, now going on, ain misadrim la but don't we say that you're able to make any certain kind of arrangements with somebody that's such in such debt? Okay, that to work out so that they're not impoverished. Okay, so we don't make it right. If you if you owe the money and there's a lien on your property, you okay. lose it all and it's tough. well. Don't that's what I'm saying. Aren't, aren't I phrased it a little different? Aren't we able to make any kind of the implication for an arrangement? The answer apparently seems no. Amar Rav Nachman Barav Yitzchak. Says Rav Nachman Biyat Yitzchak, and we'll just go over to the top. Lomar she'ein mikrein shtar ktuba. That we don't, that we say in this kind of case, don't tear the document, and that the tuba debt must be paid in Meaning full. Meaning that we do not pass. Okay, credit. we don't follow that practice, and it still has to be based on karka. So you get divorced, you lose it all. Basically. No, no. According to Rabbanan, it cannot, and that's the whole thing. You have to put it in escrow. Yeah. Okay.
did you go to the show, Bobby? What? Why did you go to the show? Because I have a cold. I don't know. I feel I felt like I have a cold. I don't know. Kobabi, I gotta wear a mask. You're gonna do what? I gotta wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Because if I get sick, how are I gonna take care of you? Wear a mask. Of course, I don't know it. <clears throat> and I gotta give it to you the same thing I gave it to you yesterday. I said if I felt better, I would go to shul. But it's the same as yesterday. I don't know what's wrong with my throat. Can I give you the same thing I gave you yesterday? All right, yes. Yeah. Maybe you feel better. Let me give you. And I'm going to make from me too because I don't want to be sick. I should wear a mask yesterday, but I don't know. Because Isabel told me, Mommy, Isabel said, Mommy, wear a mask because God forbid you get sick. Who's going to take care of the I thought, that's true. Let me make for you what I made yesterday. You like the fish, Kovadi? Yes, it was good. I ate it all up. Oh, that's good. You have more if you want for today. Uh, Angela. Yes. Can you figure out which plug goes in here? Just a second. I'll be right there. What? This thing needs to be charged, and I can't. <laughs> oh, this one. <coughs> one of these plugs goes in here. <coughs> that one. I don't know which one goes in here. This is the this one, come on. But does it go in? I don't. Come I don't on. know where it goes even. 
This is the small one. This is the big one here. Look. Does it go in? Yeah. Oh, it in. went in? Yeah. It's already charged. All right. Let's. Yeah, so let me start with you. It's charging. I don't see it. Oh, yeah, it's charging. Okay. Well, I like when I get it in. <laughs> Leave it like this, look. Leave it like this if you want to use it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to put this back for you? Put this on the couch. Yeah. Over here, right? Probably. Yeah. Okay, let me make the thing for you. You don't want to go to the doctor? Oh, my doctor, is that what you said? Yeah, to go make appointment to see if you need a, of something. Maybe they gave you something for cold. You can make appointment, I take you. Victoria is supposed to come today. Yeah. Supposed to tell her how you feel. I'm going to tell her that. I may have a cold, I don't know. I know you do, I can hear your voice. <clears throat> I knew right away yesterday. I told you and I say, you got a cold? I don't know if I have a cold. Yes, we do, Papa. I can see your voice every day. I know you have a cold. <laughs> 